everybody. All right. I had an adventure in streaming today. Um, see, I'm, I'm going to be doing that all day. In the best way, I changed my setup again. Um, I think that's one of the things as a variety streamer that's never going to change. Uh, but anytime I switch from doing like a bunch of gaming to then a bunch of crafting and back and forth, um, we have this long running joke that it just like the better at Twitch I get, the more cables it involves. And so there's, there's a lot to move around. And I thought I had maybe fried one of my cameras. I'm glad that was not the case. Uh, we just had to, you know, turn it all off and on again. So now I am back. So thank you so much for uh, bearing with me while I was running late. You guys are the best. Um, so yeah, we're going to be getting into it. Um, we're going to be working on the goose coat. So if you did not see it either on my Facebook or in my Discord, um, exclamation point socials will get you links to all of those, but exclamation point Discord will get you Discord specifically. Uh, we're going to be working on Little Sprout's goose coat. Um, and I was working on that a little bit last week. Uh, if you were here, y'all saw me kind of start the pattern, get that ready, um, get the sleeves cut out, um, the front, the hood, uh, that's kind of where we are with it. And today we're going to keep on keeping on and hopefully, uh, be working on some of the patchwork, some of the quilting, some of the actual like sewing. Um, we're definitely, like I said, taking this very like one step at a time and like no, no holes barred kind of the everything about the process so no magic of television here um and uh we haven't gotten to any of the sewing on this sewing project yet and it's been you know like four hours so uh this is just kind of how it goes uh so we still have quite a bit more cutting out to do um, on the pattern and um i'm excited to get to it actually i was talking to little sprout about it today and uh she was just really excited that we were going to be hopefully getting to the patchwork part um which again is the like quilt even though, okay, well, you know, I'm going to do this like 12 million times because y'all know me, but like the quilt in like quilt or quilted coat is actually just the act of bringing layers together where like patchwork is more what people would associate with quilted. Um, so the patchwork block is <laughs> giving me a headache and a half. Uh, actually, right now, my mom is working on it. Um, thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Quilt and Koala um, because Little Sprout and I, we like grabbed our like great big book of quilting it's like literally called like 101 quilt blocks and it's by like better homes and gardens and it's just like the best reference book for like just quick like because you know i guess these days you could just go on like pinterest but i don't know sometimes to like feel see them in like two colorways and then a gray scale and like in scale just works for my brain better so like we were looking through that book and she picked a couple and then we drew one out which is what i was saying on the um on like the social and the discords. If you haven't seen the colorized version, uh, feel free to join. I'm getting tangled. Feel free to join those. Hey, Quilt and Koala. Um, hi, mom. Uh, feel free to join those and you can see the colorized version of that block, which helps again, my brain really think through something because it's one thing to see it like as the example in like bright red or the example in bright blue, but I'm going to be using it in pinks and yellows and will it work? Um, and so we colorized the block on my iPad. We took a picture of it oops, got Procreate um, on the iPad and just, you know, colorized it. And of course, like Little Sprout drew in like extra geese and stuff. And it's really, really charming. Um, but like we found a block, we found a block or two that we really liked. We colorized them, we tried them out. And like, I don't know, I've been quilting for a number of years. It's not like it's something that I'm jumping in. I don't know, at the like nine foot diving board level. And I don't know what I'm doing, but um, this block... <laughs> is hard uh it involves y seams which like it shouldn't for geometric patchwork um so like again huge shout out to quilt and koala who's workshopping this block right now like as we speak because sure the block we picked looked complicated but that's like kind of the lovely and amazing thing about patchwork is a lot of times they look way more complicated than they are once you break it down into steps and so like i thought that was the case with this one and like being in a block in a book of patchwork blocks i'm like they're not gonna make it to where it's like i don't know wrong <laughs> not that y seems are wrong it's just one of those where it's like it shouldn't be difficult and we're looking through the instructions and like they, they have it they have us doing it a weird way and so uh yeah like i said she's workshopping it right now so i still have plenty to do before we get there it's just goal for today to get to that block so going back to quilting versus quilted versus patchwork versus all that we're going to be cutting out the rest of the pieces of the quilt coat and then we will probably bust out the machine and do some of the actual machine quilting so if you've ever 
wondered what like makes a quilt a quilt or like what quilting actually is we're gonna be getting to that today for sure excuse me I need to remember how to breathe uh but yeah as far as the patchworking we may or may not get there depending on how much quilting I get done depending on how much workshopping uh quilting koala is able to do and then also just you know see where time takes us and all of that so it was a really loud car that just went by and it sounded like my door was open and it's it's not so very loud so I am going to uh just jump into this Ta-da! we have where we were last time so if I just kind of scoot around uh some of this we don't need I'm just not disorganized in a way it's more just like I don't want to lose these pieces so they just get hauled around they go in the dresser and we jump in okay so we're gonna need this later this is the back pattern so just a refresher and also if you're new here um or new to this particular project I know that because I am a variety streamer and sometimes I'll be doing gaming sometimes I'll be doing sewing crafting what have you I know that uh, sometimes I'll be doing different things on different days. And so if you miss the beginning of any particular project or you're jumping in and have any sort of questions, I never mind having to like go back and explain things. And, Cause I know like life's crazy. Like don't, don't worry about it. Ask your questions. It's all good. Um, so this, anyway, this is going to be the back of the quilt coat. And if you're again, jumping in, cause I am seeing a couple new names in chat. So welcome. Uh, the back is going to be, okay, actually backing way up. This whole project is going to be a quilted coat for my daughter, a little sprout. So this is the back and the back, this is going to be cut on the hold. So it's going to be double of these. So you'll see the neck and it continues out. This back is going to have a gorgeous, if not overly complicated quilt or patchwork quilt block on it. Now the whole coat is going to be quilted. So in this instance, a helpful frame of reference would be if you've ever had like a down jacket or a nice big puffy uh, coat that's like quilted as well you've got like sandwiches and you're keeping them together with thread and it's puffy and it's delightful that's what we're doing here so on those sandwiches um, we do have the sleeve here which again if you're just joining us for the first time this is a really cute little pattern uh, it's by twig and tail uh, not sponsored just a fan and uh, this is the inside of the sleeve but it has this little cuff here so that when we go to the outside of the sleeve which is this delightful floral when the coat's all done and we cuff the jacket there's like a surprise little peekaboo so this jacket was definitely very well designed but it was designed so that because kids grow like exponentially uh it was designed to have this glorious cuff as like a feature and then when they just like have a growth spurt ta-da extra sleeve so you can definitely tell uh that this person either has kids or is very familiar designing for children because it's got some well put like just just little design features so very happy with this so i need to cut one more piece of batting for the sleeve and then we have all the sleeve pieces done um, again if you are just joining us batting is what's inside your quilt uh, this can be wool it can be cotton it can be polyester it can be a blend uh, it's what makes quilts so lovely and fluffy and so it looks pretty thin and this is warm and natural this is cotton um, it is but then again by the time you like add then your patchwork on one side you're batting in the middle you're backing and then quilt it like it's gonna get it's gonna get big um, and so especially on like a kid's jacket I don't need it to be the thickest I just need it to be you know functionally warm so if I wanted pure puff I would use wool if I wanted like glorious amounts of puff I could double up um, I have a I have a quilt that I did two layers of wool and then hand quilted it just because I wanted that like bubble waffle feel so it's like it's puffy and then when the uh when the quilting brings it together you get these like ridges and valleys and it's just it's delightful uh one of my favorite things actually about quilts is that so we're gonna cut one more of these so i'm kind of just mentally taking stock because it's been about a week since i've worked on this um we also have the front which i still can't decide if i want to put batting in so again like with most things um there's a lot of rules you learn and then as you get into it you learn which rules are meant to be broken and so like by the book a quilted item will have those three layers but in reality quilting means to secure them by stitching so you really don't actually have to have three layers for it to be a quilt you just have to have stitching in knot work or buttons or machine or hand stitching or what have you joining those so i could do two layers and quilt that still have it be quilted 
Um, but like semantics aside, I'm trying to figure out how warm I want this jacket to be. Um, I want it to be flexible enough that it's not like, like, was it Maggie Simpson that had the like star jumpsuit thing that she couldn't move in? Also like a Christmas story. Um, I don't want this jacket to be like that restricting, but I want it to be worth, like worth its weight, worth its effort. I don't want to like put all this work into it and have it just be like not warm. But on the other hand, where we are, the winters are pretty mild. Like it was 63 degrees today in the middle of January. Um, so it's not like we live, you know, in the Arctic. Just so. That's what I'm kind of deciding. So the sleeves for sure. Um, Cause Little Sprout's got, Little Sprout has like skinny little arms that need to stay warm. Um, but as far as like the coat's concerned, I don't know how much puff I want in it. I don't know. Still deciding. Might go ahead and cut it all even though that there is a risk of waste in that, because if I cut it all and end up not using it, then I've just made weird scraps, but I don't know, I work in weird scraps, so. Yeah, let's go ahead and cut it. Yeah, this is me just thinking to myself, because I'm looking here, and this is two layers because I've got like the front and the front, like it opens like a jacket, and feeling it, that's not enough. So let's, let's go for the puff, let's go for that quilted, right? Right, why not? So we'll need two pieces of batting out of that. Same problem on the hood. Um, this pattern was made for thicker fabrics. So like your boiled wools, your knit, like recycle, like if you take like a sweater and you like shrink it and it gets all like thick, um, that's kind of what this is. This pattern is made for. So it has the seam allowance and it has the bulk built in. Should we just, and we do get wind. This is me just, this is me just talking to myself and trying to figure out like how much enough to put into this like I don't know where's the like point of diminishing return <laughs> is there such a, I mean as long as it doesn't affect mobility is there such thing as too much fluff put the fluff in it all right if anyone has a reason why I should not put fluff in it like the batting the extra layers uh speak now otherwise we're gonna make it thick right right go for it little sprout you want a thick coat I think she is not online. That's okay. Thought she'd be online with her dad. That's whose username I'm looking for, and I don't see them yet. But that's okay. I'm running late, so I probably threw off everyone's schedule. So anyway, to reiterate, this is batting. This is cotton batting. Um, actually, is this warm and natural? I think so. Anyway, it's cotton batting. I can tell by the I can tell by the way that it is. Isn't that neat? Uh, I can I can tell by the feel. Plus, I tend and me and my mom, who uh, we're like material sharing right now, uh, we tend to lean towards the natural fibers just as a personal preference. Uh, so statistically speaking, it's going to be cotton if it's here, but it's just really nice and soft, and it almost is like a blanket in itself. Um, now this wouldn't hold up like obviously like in an emergency it's a blanket but it wouldn't hold up to a lot of washes and a lot of wear as it is um it's it will eventually like pick apart um and it can get worn out in spots which is why we're going to be like sandwiching it um you know just kind of like like how a piece of bread can kind of handle more than like a piece of lettuce could but if you make it all stronger then it's better as a sandwich i don't know there's a metaphor there Regardless, uh, this is going to be going inside, and then we're going to be adding to its structural integrity by the act of quilting. Um, so it'll all be good. Yeah, it's going to be one of those mixed metaphor nights. It's going to be one of those weird ones. So hopefully y'all are ready to get weird with me, because that's the mood I'm in. I can't even blame it on that much caffeine either. <laughs> so yeah, I have this nice large piece, which is always hard to cut into. Uh just because it's always hard to cut into. Uh, but no, I know it's going to something good. It's just, one, I think it's that just like genuine fear of wrecking material. Like once it's cut into or you're using scraps, I can't just throw my phone on the floor. Once you've like cut into it or you're using scraps, it's like that pressure's kind of gone, but like a nice pristine piece. It's like, who let me have this? <laughs> Are you trusting me with this? Why? Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, that's just how I overthink everything in my life. Actually, I can get, let's get for the bigger pieces first. So you, if you have worked with patterns, you might have noticed, uh, that I keep talking about this having seam allowance, yet I've way overcut beyond my pattern boundaries. 
Um, that is because this is going to shrink up when I quilt it, um, just inevitably, which part of me is like, watch me do this on camera and have it not shrink for the first time in my entire life. But I built in all of this extra because um, I need a piece exactly as big as the pattern, as the paper. So my goal is, my hope is, that by the time I take this, do all of my quilting work, have it shrink, have it shift, um, you know, it's, it might stretch one way or another just a little bit, like I'm hoping for not too much shrinkage and definitely not too much stretchage, that's a word, um, that I'll be able to lay this back on, on top of it and get a nice piece. Um, so it, to me, it's worth the little bit of waste just to make sure that you actually end up with like a usable piece at the end. Cause I'd much rather waste like, what is this? An inch, a couple centimeters, than have to scrap the entire piece uh, because it shrank up too much. Cause then that just doesn't benefit anybody. So like, obviously if I had, this is the first like quilt coat I've made. Um, at least up to this point. I was talking a little sprout about that today because she she was asking, she's like, mommy, where'd you get the idea to make me a quilt coat? And uh, what's funny is originally back when I was starting YouTube, my first YouTube video was going to be me making a quilt coat for myself because I, I wanted a quilt coat. I figured I'd film it, see if this whole YouTube thing worked out. Well, that particular quilt coat for myself was a disaster <laughs> in the way that... Uh, I couldn't find a pattern that worked. I have, and I've talked about this a lot on this channel where I, be between the like, just my body shape and size and then like the gender dysmorphia and all sorts of stuff, I have not found a pattern that like works for me. And then I'm like, I'm gonna try and make outerwear. And then even more complicated, I'm gonna make quilted outerwear. And so I was using my machine, which I'm very unfamiliar with because truth be told, anytime I have to sew, I normally just use my mom's machine because that's what I like learnt on. It's what I'm comfortable with. And then chances are like, I don't know, she's like right there. And uh, I can be like, hey, help. <laughs> so I was doing it on my machine and I forgot to put my walking foot on and I was sewing in linen, which linen is amazing. I love linen, like absolutely like adore linen. <sighs> But I dyed linen to make this project even more special, ran out, figured I'll cut a piece on the bias. It won't be that bad, which means it stretched. And then I wasn't using my walking foot properly. And so it stretched and I ended up just like wrecking an entire sleeve. Um, so I definitely put it aside. But while I was working on the, the quilt coat for myself, like I was I the patchwork on it's gonna be gorgeous uh, it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous I'm very excited about that uh little sprout the whole time was like wow that's beautiful it's gonna be like a blanket that you can wear oh I'd love to have one mommy can we make one someday so I'm like yeah that'd be adorable so that's where hers came from is like this promise to make her one after obviously the success from mine I'd have all this knowledge and be able to whip these out no problemo yeah well so we're kind of like back to the beginning again for the first time um with some mild experience AKA, as usual, I have a generic idea of what I'm doing, a little bit of experience to be able to BS my, my way through the rest of it. But, you know, I'm not surprised when things also just go wrong. So that's where, that's, that's where we are. See you. Anyway, so yeah, that's where the idea to make a little sprout one came from. And it's kind of ironic and kind of funny and so very me that hers is going to come out first, even though it was the second project. Um, but now I've learned a lot between the, between the two coats. I've learned an absolute ton. So like there's no there's no such thing in a lot of ways as like I don't want to say wasted effort because there obviously is. But like wasted education. Ow, stab myself with a pin. There's no such thing. And then honestly, like now. Um, I'll be more inspired to go back to my coat. Whereas like if I was just making the one for myself and then she like didn't inspire me to do this one, mine would probably sit around for a while until I, you know, either like decided to do some like work in progress bingo challenge or something, or I just ran out of other things to do, which I don't know. I don't see that happening because I love to start new projects. So that's where we are with that. Um, but I don't know. It's nice to... These battings are different. I might just cut two pieces and save that as a scrap. But regardless, I think I just forgot what the point of my original story was, but that, I don't know, gave some background info on why I'm doing this. But yeah, like a year later, I still haven't made myself my coat, but I'm making hers. 
And I do, I do want to get back to mine. I just, like I said, I way overcomplicated mine from the beginning. I mean, like, whoops, punching things. Like I said at the beginning, I switched my setup around, so nothing's where it used to be. I, you know, hand dyed the fabric, didn't make enough. Just, I, I really caused my own problems by jumping in and trying to do too much, which I'm mean, really, I'm not that like upset about because I don't know, that's how I work. Like if I'm not just trying things and jumping in and seeing what works and what doesn't, then it's not very me. But on the other hand, I'm learning to just, eh, sometimes it's okay to make something simple. I don't know. I think also just as an ADHD thing, it's got to be really exciting. And not that simple things aren't exciting because in a lot of ways, I do want to get more simple with my life in, in the way that I'm making good, honest, simple things and not stressing. Uh, but, you know, like, I don't know. I still like to, it, my brain still likes to be like, hey, if it's not complicated, is it worth the effort? And it's like, yes, brain, it absolutely is. And I would tell my friends that yes, their brains it absolutely is but i don't know telling your own brain can be hard so which i guess <laughs> is funny then that this ended up being more complicated uh than i had originally intended because this was supposed to be easier than mine because it's not as much patchwork and it's smaller and i'm using an using a pattern instead of trying to draft a pattern and i'm just you know, this one should have been easier, and then it's kind of funny. And surprise, it's not. So maybe that's just how these things are destined to go. So I am trimming out some fabric here. If you're noticing that I'm cutting more than one layer, uh, like, don't fret. It's, uh, I needed to trim this edge anyway and hadn't last time, so now I can. So there's one. And I make one more. And if you're curious why I'm not just cutting two layers, since I have to make two, uh, it's because this is really, really thick, and I don't want anything to, like, get too far away from me. Like, um, just, yeah, don't want to, don't want to goof anything up. So I'm just taking it nice and slow and just doing it one at a time. It just gives me time to, like I say, get into it. This also helps my brain just kind of meditatively get into the swing of things again um, before we have to start, like, the hard part, which is going to be the quilting or that crazy amount of patchwork. <sighs> and it's funny, too, because, like, literally we picked that pattern at random. Um, it's not like, I mean, I, I tried to steer Little Sprout towards something again that was pretty and would be, like, worth it. But, I don't know, I trusted the pattern book. I trusted you. And it's just funny that it ended up being, like, ridiculous. So. I don't know if that little anecdote doesn't, like, say more about me than... <laughs> oh, well, now you know me. <laughs> I'm Catherine, and I overcomplicate things even when I don't intend them to do. But sometimes it works out, and then I'm reminded that, wow, I can make beautiful things. And I'm sucked back in. Dang siren call. I've already got fuzz in my hair. Okay, so now, if you see from the side here, that's two sleeves worth of thickness. And it's quite, quite thick. Um, so obviously it'll be half and half. Uh, let's actually, you know what? Let's make those sandwiches. Let's just jump right into it. I know I've still got pieces to cut, but then this way, um, I've paired everything. Oh, no, I still have to do some sewing before I start. As usual, overcomplicated it. Hello, hidden pin. Where are you? Yeah, hold on. This is, yeah, okay. So you can see how gorgeous. I just want to show off the, the fabric here because this is so pretty. This is going to be the outside of the coat. And then imagine it with like just a beautiful quilted grid through it. It's just going to have like just big cottage core vibes it's gonna be comfy and cozy it's gonna feel in the best ways fresh and light and modern because it's got this gorgeous kind of what i what me and my friends call the cal art style flower um it's just this very painterly uh not a lot of line art flower um so it's nice and fresh and floral but it still has all the like big grandma energy um that just keeps it like super cozy and like and charges it with just mystical mystical cozy grandma vibes so, which really big picture is like what I love about cottage core. Okay, so that'll be the outside. So this will be the part that is on the sleeve. Then it'll get a layer of the fluff. 
And all of these had to be cut in mirrored pairs. So there is a right sleeve and a left sleeve. So I'm going to have to try not to get these mixed up. Um, which we'll see what happens when we go to put this actual sleeve in. Okay, so that gets put down. And then it gets the lining, which in the best worst ways is overcomplicated because I need to trim it down and put the, uh, the blue. There we go. For the cuff. So I accidentally cut this piece a little long. That's okay. I'll have a nice scrap left over. Um, and really, this has just been my like lining fabric for masks. So I have plenty of it. Uh, and then blue. So this blue will act, like I said, is that kind of magic turnabout cuff. Eh, give me my fabric. So I will be sewing this about here and then it will come down and there'll be a nice clean line. But that is the sleeve, like in a nutshell. Um, then that gets sewn and voila, sleeve. Sleeve with sleeve with cuff. So it's super cute. There, there's the jacket. Like, it's funny when it starts coming together and it's like, I can see it, I can visualize it. It's a, it's a sleeve. So I will have to do some sewing before I can baste this. Um, I'll have to do some pressing. It's, whew, I'm gonna use every piece of my sewing equipment today. That's all right. So that is one sleeve. I'm gonna set up the other one and then I'll just set those to the side. I just, I really love this fabric. Like, you can just see how sweet, how, like, darling the little sorrels are. Where, it, Like I said, it has that, like, it's not stodgy. Um, it's not too much as a floral. It's very, it's still very light. Um, but it's, you know, also got some fun, fun energy. Okay, I'm putting this on. So this is just a white on white, which I know is very hard to see. I tried showing on my cameras last time. Uh, it's got little flowers on it, so it's very subtle. Um, and it's really just in the best way. Like I said, it's just like big yardage that we use for things like mask linings and uh, sleeve linings. It just has a little bit more visual interest. Not that anyone's going to see it, but it's there. So there's two sleeves. And it's already like a lot of fabric. Like this is what I was worried about with it being too much. Like this is just the sleeves. Um, but again, this is a coat. This is outerwear. Uh, it's gonna be cozy. As I'm sitting here, I'm like this giant sweater. I'm like, oh no, what if it's too much outerwear? Um, worst case, if it's that hot, we just wear a t-shirt. We'll figure it out. Okay, so that's gonna be those. I will fold up um, our sleeve pattern here and put it on top just so I remember not that we don't know what a sleeve looks like but you know by the time there's 27 little pieces it can get to be a little much so where we were last time so there are four major pieces two fronts so a front a back sleeve hood are the four so obviously there's two sleeves two fronts one back and one hood made out of two parts so there's a lot of pieces but like pattern wise there's only four uh, so it's not too bad. Um, there is a pocket, which we will have to figure out later. I might make custom pockets because, again, they're probably going to be a patchwork block. So I'll just make, I don't know, a eh, five-inch block, six-inch block, just making it a pocket. Um, and continue on. So we got most of it cut out. We can't do the back till we do the patchwork. Um, but what really took up our time in the last video was setting up our, our really nice pattern because uh, it was like 30 pieces of paper. And then we had to make a make a puzzle so we got the fabric cut out but i remember still not knowing what i wanted to line the interior of the body with and that's kind of where i'm stuck because the the coat itself is this absolutely gorgeous dusty rose uh corduroy so that's the front and then it's the back for everything but the like nine inch quilt block it's also the hood which the hood is adorable a little pixie hood i love it so much what i can't decide is if the hood and the body well now i guess i've decided the body gets batting if the hood should be fluffy as well um because like we get harsh winds and our ears get cold so like why not have a padded hood and then again what am i lining these with because when the hood is down you'll see inside so it's an opportunity for some like fun peekaboo of color same with the jacket being open but i worry that like this is already a lot of look so like but it isn't i don't okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take this pattern off so we can get a true visual and we're gonna lay some options out um 
because in reality, actually, this is the front of the coat and it is plain right now, but the back will have patchwork, the hood will be plain, and then the sleeves are where we're really bringing in the visual information. So like if I lay in a sleeve here, I don't know if this is the correct sleeve. That's what the jacket's looking like. So like folded in half, here's the front. It's gonna have a pocket. Here's here. So it's not as busy as I guess I'm thinking because right now my brain's stuck on that patchwork block, which is like nine different colors, but that's on the back. So like, even if this has patchwork, like, do we put the blue as a fun, like peekaboo? Do we line it? I don't think I have enough of this white, the pattern floral white. Let me check. Keep it the same as the sleeves. Uh, that's this one. Oh, we might actually, you know what? We did buy yardage of this one. Would that be fun? Because I have, um, is it a half, did I buy a half yard bundle or quarter, fat quarter bundle? Don't remember. This is, yeah, design decisions. I, I guess I just worry that if this is the inside of the coat, if Little Sprout has on like a patterned dress, um, it's a lot. But on the other hand, like it's cute that it matches. Um, the coat will not be able to be reversible just because of seam finishes. I'm not worried about that. Eh. Yeah, let's make it this let's make it match the sleeves. And then for the hood, I think we should do something really fun. So Little Sprout loves pink and she loves blue. So I'm really happy that we have all these like nice dusty colors. Um, but we definitely use a lot of like teal and mint and turquoise uh, when we do little sprout things. So I think the hood should be lined in this one because then that's the same as the cuff and then it all looks like I planned it. I mean, that's what's fun about obviously working from like a collection, which I know you can kind of see it off screen here. Here we go. Is all of these obviously coordinate and I could do something really fun, like bring in one of the yellows. Um, cause the only other place that like these yellows and the baby pink, um, are really going to be is the patchwork on the back. It's going to have every single one of these colors. And then the patchwork pockets on the front again, will bring them in. Um, but like yellow is my favorite color. So I've like tempted to put the yellow, but it's not little sprouts. So let's go with the blue. Okay. So I guess I have two pieces of this. Again, I love how cute this is. This is the selvage edge, which the selvage is kind of like the, um, like the publication info page, like in a book where it tells you who made it and when and, and everything. And so the selvage is also what hooks it into like the machine that weaves it. But for the color code, they, they used geese, which is just really, those are upside down. It's really sweet. So it's like, you can see all the, the colors that are, uh, printed in the fabric there. That's, that's a lot. Like that's that's many many layers of color okay so we're gonna do um the blue actually you know what i'm noticing that uh little sprout might be in chat so let's ask her uh let's ask her what color she wants the hood to be on the inside uh and grab it if you are there can you ask little sprout what color she wants the inside of her hood to be i've got all of these and i'm also going to text you because i know that sometimes we lurk <laughs> And that's the beauty of being live. Inside of her hood. All right, so I'll shoot that question while I cut the inside of the uh, the body. There we go. When in doubt, ask the client. <laughs> So that'll be hood, and then we'll do uh, this one for this one. You did hear your name while you were in the kitchen. Uh, I was wondering what color Little Sprout wants on the inside of her hood. So the hood is the sweet pixie hood. Um, and so when it's down, there's a lining. So also like around her face, uh, I need to pick a color to line it in. So I was thinking this blue because that's the cuff color. But I've also got all of these. So if she wants to chime in, um, cause you know, like I kind of got there in the end, like who better to pick a color than the client. <laughs> if you'd like to ask her what color she'd like, that would be fantastic. While I cut the, uh, the body lining. The back of the, the back lining of the coat might have to just be plain white, but nobody's gonna see that, so. 
Oh, I think, you know what? I think we might have discovered I didn't have enough. And that was the issue. That is the issue. Crud. <laughs> All right. Well, now we have two questions. This is going to be... This is what obviously, like, doesn't get, you know, like, polished, edited YouTube video is, like, the... Okay, cool. I've made a decision and I don't have enough fabric. Uh, whoops. We'll just pick something else. So what I'm still trying to figure out is what color to line the body with. I don't have enough of this. So the hood could then be... The hood could be this white, the hood could be blue, the hood could be any of these colors. So inside of the hood, to answer your question there, uh, Ink Rabbit, is the hood lining. So once this is all sewn up, I know it's hard to, it's hard to visualize from a uh, 2D shape to a 3D. I mean, that's what makes tailoring and pattern drafting and just clothing construction in general hard. But you can see, like, if I turn my head to the side, you can see the hood. Um, I know. Woo. So the lining goes on the inside, and then when it's down, uh, it would have that peekaboo. She said any. Perfect. Thanks, kid. <laughs> True artistic freedom, um, which I totally respect. Okay, we'll do the blue. Uh, but also, it's just kind of funny when a client is like, oh, just do whatever you want. And you're like, but I, I don't I don't know. That's why you're the client. <laughs> like, you mean a freedom that I can do, you know what I need to do, but also like, I don't know, tell me what you want. All right, which means we're going to use the white. So I'm pulling out my bulk white. Again, this is that white on white uh, that we use. Just obviously I keep it very delicately shoved in a cabinet behind me. Um, oh, the secrets this cabinet holds. <sighs> I could piece the hood lining. Um, which means it could be two colors. The problem I'm running into, uh, Quilt and Koala, isn't actually lack of fabric pieces big enough for the hood. It's now the body. <laughs> so I think the body's just going to get lined because I thought I had enough of this. I don't. Um, so the hood could be multicolored. Don't know if that read as... I mean, it could read as really like kind of like Harlequin cute or it could just read as, oops, I didn't have enough fabric. But it could also read as just like I don't know, I'm a little dormouse who lives under a mushroom and these were the scraps of fabric I had and so I made a charming coat. <laughs> you know, moods. <sighs> I wish I had enough of this for the front lining though. I wonder if I have anything else. I think I only have fat quarters. And I've already cut into these. And I don't really want to have to line, I mean, piece the main body lining that's already a lot of bulk, already a lot of seams. Not that one more seam would kill it, but eh. Thank you. Watch me as I have a, have a existential crisis over lining. Ah, the beauty of trying to figure this out. Like, okay, I went into this like fully with a plan. Like, this isn't me just like, I don't know, going in and being like, today we're going to make a coat and I've done no prep. Like, I had a plan. Just like like with any good plan, um, it only survives first contact with the enemy and then you adjust. That's just what happens. I don't think the goose pieces are big enough. I almost called these ducks. And then two, like, oh, this isn't wide enough either. And it's going the wrong direction. So, like, completely ignore that. But that'd be cute. Like, peekaboo, like, geese. <laughs> Um, that's probably only funny to me. Okay, yeah, that's not going to be big enough. Oh, that would be so charming, though. This fabric is charming. This entire collection is delightful. Okay, so yeah, I, that means any of these fat quarters aren't going to be big enough. Now, I could line it with itself. I could corduroy line. Um, I just worried that, like, two, line, two layers of corduroy and batting might be too much. But I don't know. I'm, I'm holding on to that right now because I have corduroy... Corduroy, batting, batting. So if I, I'm just holding this, like, ah, it's, it's thick, but is it any thicker than like a normal jacket? Is it detrimentally thick? I don't think it's detrimentally thick. <sighs> Blanc. Let me get out some more corduroy. Here it is. I don't know, I kind of dig it. I just like the feeling of corduroy. That's kind of why I went before I cut the batting. I was like, it's just two layers of corduroy like enough, but it's kind of thin. 
Now we're gonna have the most mild winter ever and she's never gonna get to wear this. <laughs> All right. I'm not asking for it to get cold because I am, I mean, I don't know. We have, we, I live in the desert. Um, and so like we get the like crazy temperature swings, like it'll be freezing at night and then it'll get to 70. Um, and so like, sometimes it is really cold. Like, yeah, it's California cold. I live in California. Um, but like we get the swings, but like most of the time, um, it's hot. So it's even weird to be thinking about a coat, but like we're in winter, it is actually cold. And I think that was part of the reason why I couldn't make these projects earlier is like, I could not sit in my like glorious tin can of a bus while it was 120 outside and be like, yes, let's make a quilt coat. Um, I could use flannel instead of warm and natural. It doesn't feel that thick. I just don't know if I love the other piece of corduroy. I think that's kind of where I'm getting hung up. I wish I had, I know this is just a complete like trick of color theory, but just something about having the like white inner layer made it feel lighter. Uh, I mean, it's a light color. It feels lighter. Like it's not that hard to science that one out. Maybe I will use the white on white. It just seems so boring. That's why I love, I like love this. I love that so much. It's the inside of the coat. Why am I, why am I worried so much? Cause I care. But finish not, like, not even, like, finish not perfect, but, like, it's not of any use to her now. If I finish it, it will be. And it doesn't really matter what it's lined with. It's lined with, lined with love and care. Um, no, that's not that thick. I don't know. Okay, let's do corduroy. I've got it. And this isn't enough to make me a skirt. So, <laughs> like, giant, giant priorities there. Um... I did have two pieces of this. Give me two seconds. It's got wrinkly. Which corduroy, I was talking last time about how much of a pain corduroy is when it needs to be ironed. Um, will that work? Or is that facing the wrong direction? Nope, that's facing the wrong direction. But I could... Nope, I'm good. Okay. Welcome to Catherine Talks to Herself. <laughs> so corduroy, if you're unfamiliar, is... Kind of like a, kind of like velvet in a way where you can't just iron it because it's got like finicky little fibers that need to stand up and if you smash them down and especially if it's polyester and they melt, you've just got like a giant scab. Um, but it's nice because it's got all these ridges. They're called whales, um, like wild whale, wide whale corduroy, which it's like so hard for me not to just like put the slang in that. Uh, called wild whale corduroy. Um... So I've got to make sure that the whales are going the right direction. Um, so in this case, I want them to run down the coat because then we're not like truncating and making like just a hard horizontal line. We're just lengthening. Um, just one of those like, you, you know, clip makers know. It's also got a little bit of a um, pile to it. So like if you've ever sat in a chair and you could like write your name in it that's because some fabrics have that uh if you're working with something that has that make sure it like goes the right way otherwise you'll always be walking around with like know, some funny design on you which just reminds me of that meme where somebody drew like gandalf in one of those chairs and people laughed about somebody just having a like a funny butt because you know it's a chair somebody like somebody's tushy drew gandalf Okay, so we're going to line this with corduroy. That's, that's the end of that. We're making decisions. And if it ends up, if I feel like it's way too thick, I could, like Quilt and Koala said, I could put flannel on the inside to still have those three layers uh, instead of the warm and natural. But I don't know, the warm and natural is not that thick. Like, I feel like it should be thicker in my mind. Because a lot of people picture quilts as really nap. Nap is the word I'm looking for for the this on fabric the can you draw gandalf in it thank you um but it's not that thick uh i'm not putting wool in this and honestly like i don't know i eat puffy wool coats are a thing quilt coats are cozy okay so 
So that's one more piece. Um, anyone else have like the entire soundtrack to uh, Encanto stuck in their head? Because that was a good one. <laughs> that's just been my life today. Okay, so again, I'm not being too uh, finicky about how well those are cut out. Again, because I'm going to have inevitable uh, shrinkage and quilting, and I'm going to have to trim it up anyway, so. Okay, let's cut out another one. Now, these have to be mirrored, so I have to make mirrored pairs, so, like, watch me overthink this. Now, all of these layers together gets to be a lot. But again, it's a coat. It's a coat. This is me convincing myself um, that it's fine. It's fine. This is fine. Hello there, General Kenobi. How is it going, Quiet On? I saw you were streaming earlier. How did that go? We are making a coat. I am uh, overthinking every step, as is my uh, modus operandi. This is how we do. <laughs> Yeah, this is the uh, continuation stream of Little Sprout's quilt coat. So uh, I'm finally, it's finally cold enough here to like make me actually want to work on this. Um, and by finally cold enough, I think it was 64 degrees today. <laughs> so like, I'm sorry to all the places where it's actually cold. Uh, I'm in California. We, uh, weather is weird here. We don't really do like weather. We have our own weather. We're our own thing. <laughs> Quiet on says in chat it was a dud stream but I got my eight hours in and just need three more days of streaming that's right you are like solidly on the affiliate path uh congratulations that's super cool you know what it's cool sometimes I talk to myself and sometimes uh, the people want to chat so I, I feel that but uh glad you got your uh, hours in that's awesome that is awesome were you what game were you playing I saw the notification pop up but I was meeting with uh little sprouts uh PLT, we do kind of a charter homeschool, so I had a, lots of, like, uh, homeschool momming to do today, so. Ah, KOTOR, excellent! KOTOR, KOTOR. Right? Yeah, always, uh, always feel free to drop your, uh, drop your links. You know what? Neither did I. <laughs> it's hard. Quiet Dawn says, I, Quiet Dawn says I didn't know how to play. Um, I feel that. I feel that. Anyone who's been on my uh, Star Wars Saturday knows knows those feels. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing either. And 19 hours in, all we've been doing is playing Pazak. So <laughs> haven't saved the galaxy yet. Still just playing Space Blackjack. Okay, so that is the batting cut on the front and the uh, two sleeves. So if you put all that together, I mean, like this is gonna be a thick coat, but it also should be like the coziest thing ever. And then we have the hood so let's I think just just because we do have wind here like really breezy crazy like measurably up there in the double digit mile an hour wind um I think I will put batting in this as well excuse me pins okay don't do that at home that wasn't very smart but <laughs> uh quite on says then I ended up doing a bit of pokemon diming and ended after an hour cool um diamond the new one like shiny diamond or like og diamond I know everyone's been playing all the new ones. I am always woefully behind when it comes to Pokemon. Um, me and turn-based games don't go that well together, which is kind of surprising for, like, KOTOR. But as we delve into the, like, specifics, KOTOR is more, like, D&D turn-based versus, like, turn-based, turn-based, turn-based. Um, wow, I'm just going to have enough of this. Maybe. Oh, well. You know, in the best ways, if I use up all my fabric, then it's, like... I used up all my fabric. It lived its purpose. It figured out its life. And then, uh, you know, then it gives me an excuse to buy more fabric. <laughs> oh, that's going to be really close. You know what? Nobody look. I'm going to cut this slightly, like, slightly off. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> ah, Brilliant Diamond, the remake. Cool. Yeah, Little Sprout is playing... One of them. Uh, her dad's playing the other. I don't remember who picked which one. Uh, I played Platinum. Wait, Platinum, Pearl, 
Diamond. Yes, I play Platinum. When I, when I did those um, back in the day. I had Piplup as my starter, which is weird for me because normally I'm like grass team all the way, but Piplup was just so cute. <sighs> so cute. All right, let's see. Let me look at the actual pattern. Oh, that barely fits on the actual pattern. Ah. Okay. And I can't get two out of this, can I? Nope. Dang, pattern math. All right, so what I'm what I'm doing right here is I have two different pieces. This is a fat quarter, I think, and then this is another piece. Um, because I had a little. I was gonna say I had a like little fat quarter pack, but some of these I have extra pieces in, and this one might be a thin quarter, and that one's a fat quarter. In the best way, and in like the worst way. There's a lot of like kind of fun and also very silly quilt lingo like fat quarters and thin eights and layer cakes and jelly rolls and I love it but uh it doesn't always make the most sense to my my brain can I oh hold on uh so what I'm doing is seeing I might be able to do that did y'all see that that like tan gram magic there will that fit if I yes okay Try not to waste fabric here is what we're doing. We're trying for like maximum efficiency, but that also just means like not driving myself absolutely insane over this um, because like, like it's fabric. Like obviously every material on this planet comes at a cost and I don't want to just like waste anything willy nilly. Um, but I also don't want to like worry so much about it that I like never get anything done either. Cause like this fabric's made, I should use it. Um, you know, we're just gonna really hope that this doesn't shrink. That's what's gonna happen. There we go. Okay. Ow, that was a pin. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing is pinning the lining. This is gonna be in this adorable pixie hood, which if you're here the first stream, it got me on like a three hour, like deliciously distracting, uh, excited rant about uh, Ren Fairs. <laughs> Which then led, oh, so there is follow-up, um, because this is the kind of person that I am. I was talking for a solid number of hours about how, like, one day I want to cosplay as a centaur. Like, full-on centaur. Like, I want to be a pony. Um, just, like, not even my final form. Like, I just want to be a horse. Um, and then I found out that there was a uh, an artist team that put out a book called... Um, the centaur of attention which just 10 out of 10 uh best pun ever but it was a pattern book and i'll, I'll uh, link link it in my discord because it's delightful but it's a pattern book uh to be a centaur to make a centaur of like articulated centaur costume so i figure that was a good good base and a good place to start um and we'll just kind of see where the journey takes us so like 2022 is the year of just Hold on, I need to make sure these are facing the right way. Uh, being a centaur, apparently. Nope, I gotta flip this. Okay, so sometimes when you're cutting patterns, you gotta cut like one on the right side and one on the wrong side um, and make sure that they're facing the right way or you end up with two unusable pieces of fabric. Oh no, did I, did I mix, mess that up? I might have goofed. It's okay, I do have the other piece. Um, I'm gonna end up with two of the same and I can't have that. I need two opposites. Which is <laughs> do I want to fight for Narnia? I mean, like who doesn't? Right? <laughs> I think we all grew up just I think that's kind of like in the best ways is like what just unabashedly being a nerd, un unabashedly goodness, being a nerd and just kind of getting to that point where you like, you know, don't really give a flying flip anymore where you're just like you know what yeah I'm gonna be all the things I wanted like I love all these creatures and costumes and characters and now I'm just gonna be them like all right so we are gonna cut this slightly on the bias Shh, don't tell anybody um that's what happens when you're running out of fabric it's fine it'll be fine it's gonna be fine if it shrinks up we'll deal with it later uh we're gonna live a little dangerously and cut this on the bias so not on the true bias that'll be fine Welcome to, like, danger quilting. <laughs> I 
Uh, quite on says now I want to kind of watch the uh, Narnia movies now, just not the third one. Yeah, no, I that's that's a big mood. Um, I don't even think I watched the third one like or, like when when it was a thing. Why Hollywood? Why do you do that to us? You start out decently and you just give up on us, and then you have to reboot twelve million times because you didn't do it right the first time. Which, I mean, like, as I say that, I'm like, oh man, I'm like the same. Sometimes I don't do things right and then have to reboot my own projects. But shush. This is a commentary on Hollywood, not myself. <laughs> and it's, it's funny, as you're mentioning them, I'm like, oh, I don't remember these, like, at all. Like, did I completely sleep on all of these? I know I didn't. I love Narnia. I just... Okay, I guess I gotta add that back to the watch list. Um... It's a lot to get caught up on. I'm not even I'm not even caught up with Book of Boba Fett, which then I just feel like a bad nerd. I just have I finally caught up on The Witcher, so like Which okay, like obviously this is just like me being greedy for content. Um but it's like, oh man, it was a year between seasons and then we got eight episodes and it was just over so quickly. <laughs> they like I did not get enough uh Yaskia content. I mean, it's just, that's, I mean, obviously it just is getting good and I'm excited and you can only fit so much into each episode and, but it just felt like it was over way quicker than the first season. Um, and I don't know if that's just anticipation. I don't know if that's just, it was a lot to tell and it went really quickly or if it just was like, oh, but I, I didn't play the Witcher games. Um, I was curious about reading the books actually. Uh, more so just I know that that style of game is not a game I'm great at so like why why have a bad time <laughs> but I might look for somebody who's like I might look for a let's play like that sounds kind of fun because I'm starting to really care about the characters um, and I know that they're quite different well not quite different but I, obviously there's differences between as always the books and the show and the game and the and the and the um, and I'm just curious like so, you know, you're like stuck on a franchise where you're like, yes, give me more content and I don't care what form it comes in anymore. I need more content. Uh, Quite on says, I still need to watch both and Hawkeye. Yeah, I didn't watch Hawkeye yet either. Um, Ink Rabbit keeps telling me I need to. Um, but I haven't. Not for like any reason other than just time. I've been reading. And I can't even pretend I've been like reading anything like deep. I don't know, I've just been on like a weird fanfiction page, but that's just who I am as a person, so. <laughs> it's okay, so Ink Rabbit asks in chat, do you enjoy Netflix's binge style or Disney Plus's weekly episode? Um, I end up kind of like being super late to the train and then everything's there and I binge them. I think <laughs> Okay, this is going to, like, sound awful. I think I have bad habits from Game of Thrones, where, like, some seasons we would totally have, like, was it HBO? Yeah, HBO, and we'd watch them. But, like, the seasons where it was, like, the years where it was, like, couldn't afford it, I would, like, wait till I had a 30-day trial and then, like, binge the entire thing during that time. Um, like, that was, I mean, that was, gosh, that was, like, nine years ago, some of this. Like, you know, you did what you can. I didn't want to pirate it, uh, so I waited. It was legit, if not a little, you know, like, eh, waiting for the three, 30 day free trial but they offered it so that was a thing but so I think I've just kind of like conditioned myself to like binging fantasy plus I've always hated like I always hated tv where you like you had to wait a week um like I don't know I got ADHD I don't got time to remember all these things I want the story now I want to like feel characters especially if like then I get like I don't want to wait a week between like heartbreak and junk just just put that straight straight in just I don't know emotionally curb stomp me all in one thing so I can just feel it all at once. I don't want to drag this out. Um, so in that respect, I think that's kind of why I haven't been doing Book of Boba Fett is just because, well, I guess today is Thursday, so there's two episodes out now, but wow, two episodes. I'm just gonna obsess and then spend my entire week like, like with WandaVision. <laughs> um, like every single week was just like, Mephisto confirmed like every single week and it was just like I don't I don't know I just want to wait and see it all I don't want to like look at every scene for details that nobody actually put in there hyper obsessed like I can hyper obsess on my own thank you very much um this is me lining up to cut out double hood is kind of off screen here let me get better so and then let me 
just lay my pattern just to make sure again that I'm staying. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I could be closer. Ugh, being efficient. Oh, yeah, no worries, Qui Gon. Um, quite on. Thank you for jumping in. Um, and uh, I will catch you around. Peace out. Um, Ink Rabbit also says, I binge Breaking Bad, but had to wait for the last three episodes. <laughs> It's like, I remember that you really got all caught up and then it's like, oh no, I'm actually caught up. And then you've like, you know, you, like you, the royal you, develop these like bad habits because you could watch it all and then you have to wait and then it's unbearable. It's like, what is this nonsense? Is this what everyone else had to do? Who, who lives like this? So now I think with, and like, this is like no shade to Boba Fett, but he was never my favorite character. Um, Like, and as in like, I don't dislike him. It's more just like, like, if this was, like, the book of Asajj Ventress, I would have already seen every episode, like, six times. I wouldn't... I, it would just be on repeat. Um, but he's not my hyperfixation. So I think I'd rather enjoy the journey. And so I'd rather have... You know what? There's probably going to be, what, six, eight episodes. I'd rather have that as one experience um, versus just, like, just, just jumping in because I need the content, if that makes sense. Um, going in as a journey like what was fun about mandalorian it was like the first star wars tv show so i definitely wanted to be on the cusp of that i didn't want to i didn't want anything spoiled i wanted to watch it like like it was a tv show you know like one episode at a time but even by like the second season i was like we're binging this um because then i just you know got my content how i wanted my content so <laughs> Ink Rabbit says, weekly is better for my sleep. I'm not staying up going, one more episode? Yeah, I did that with The Witcher. I uh, do not regret, but my sleep schedule is like, what are you doing? But it was fun. It was good. I am still really like, I feel like Witcher season two got really, really good and then ended, um, which like they tend to do that. But like this one in, really in particular, just really, really just good and then ended, like even more so than normal. Um, it was like six episodes of everyone like with like no spoilers it was like six episodes of build up and then finally you get to like the two and they're like yeah this is gonna be it and they're like we'll catch you next time I'm like no but I want more it's not even like my prime franchise but I was really enjoying it which means you like that's how you know something's really good and again that kind of talks back to that like passion project thing because I was watching uh, some like just some behind the scenes with some of the directors and stuff and like they are just geeking out about it and uh to me that's like yeah this isn't like i didn't play these games i didn't read these books and like yeah i started watching it because all my friends were watching it um and of course like most of my friends were watching it for you know Geralt and but then i don't know i got hooked and then fell in love with yaskia and now i'm watching it from a my baby boy bard but no, I, I really care about the characters, even characters that I think thought I didn't care about or wasn't going to care about. Uh, no, very, very invested. Very invested in uh, Yennefer Vanderbarg. Um, and I know that uh, probably going to hurt me in the heart feels. Oh, I think Rabbit says a friend of ours is going to be playing The Witcher when she starts streaming again. That would be cool. Uh, and if she does, I will drop her streams in the Discord. It's fun to have... Uh, it's fun to have streamer friends. Okay, so this is now the hood uh, complex. What I'm gonna do just for trial here is jam some pins through this. This is thick. Luckily, I don't have to sew all of this all the time. Actually, that pin might have just been dull. Oh well. Okay, so I'm gonna pin it just really roughly and try it on, and then y'all can see what um, it, the hood looks like. Cause this is cool this is really where like all of these flat weird mismatched pieces really 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 start to feel like it's a thing like it's their own thing and the skeletons are part of it like yeah. okay i'm gonna try not to stab myself but now you can see hood let me switch to just face cam only okay hood right Ta -da. but when we open it up and see this is why the like lining thing was cute here's the hood lining so now and remember this is for a five-year-old not for me perfect there's the like and then when it comes down like hood it's a thing right it's cute perfect 
E. Okay, so now you can kind of see the, like, I don't know, that's, to, to me, it's a big deal. Um, it really starts coming together. I really start to, like, feel it. I also realize I might have completely dorked something. So let me read the instructions. So just for, let me switch this back to face cam. Okay, so this is supposed to be lined. I was going to quilt these pieces, which then means I'm going to have to... I have to bind this. Do I put the binding on the outside? I could have a visible binding. Okay. So what I'm muttering about, like an absolute nutter. Um, normally when you have something, I don't have an example of this. Normally when you have something like outerwear. Oh, you're going to, okay, fine. And grab it redeemed hydrate before I go off on a tirade. I will do that. Um, I see you. <laughs> Uh, Increpid also says, Little Sprout said, Aw, cute, that will be good. Oh, thank you, baby. Alright, this is, this is for you. I'm only mad in the, like, you caught me monologuing kind of way. Okay, so, normally, with something like this with outerwear, you'd have your outer layer that you'd sew together, and then you'd have your lining and you'd sew it together, the inverse, and then you'd sew them and flip them so you have like no seams, right? And it's beautiful. I overcomplicated that by wanting to quilt these pieces. So if I was to go sew this, like I, if I could get a nice edge on the inside, I'm gonna have a raw edge somewhere. Now I could just slap the raw edges on the inside of the hood and be like, shh. But I don't wanna do that. Um, so what I was muttering about was, do I bind this? Now binding, I'm just gonna go get a quilt. Like I keep talking about all these quilt things and then I don't have a quilt in front of me. So, ha, huh, I'm gonna go get a quilt. Y'all are gonna learn about quilts. And I'm back. Okay, that's like, the best part about working in a like 100 square foot space is I walked all the way to the end of the bus and uh, I'm back. Okay, so this is a dusty quilt because it's been hanging in the window. This is a quilt. I made this. <laughs> Actually really proud of this one. This one was my first uh, like 100% by hand. So no sewing machine, all hand stitched. It's pretty, I like this one. Anyway, this is a quilt. This one is very puffy. Uh, this quilt has two layers of, let me switch, two layers of wool batting. So you can see, like you can see that quilting in there. You can see that puff, like it is, it's plush and I love it. Um, so like that gloriousness there, those hills and valleys, the puckery, beautiful, like all of this, that's all quilting, all these stitches. Uh, this one is, like I said, uh, hand quilted. That is what makes a quilt a quilt. That's what makes it different from a blanket. That's what makes it different from like anything else is that stitching through all of those layers. Um, so you can see all the quilting here. So this, like imagine this now and then like add a jacket, it's gonna be puffy. It's gonna be so nice. Um, what I was talking about when I was talking about the hood though is binding because on any quilt you're gonna have those three layers so we'll go back to this you have like your top your uh, batting and then you have your backing one of these may or may not have patchwork etc etc you notice that you have this raw edge like this just kind of raw edge like after you do all your quilting you're gonna be able to see these layers how you finish off a quilt is called binding and so on this one you can see this kind of cat fuzz uh kind of khaki gold strip here that kind of goes around this is binding uh it's a strip of fabric that you sew on and fold over and sew and it really just seals off the edge of the quilt like it's now it's bound it's it, there is a boundary it's finished so on this hood instead of having a raw edge uh like here down the back um i think i'm going to bind it which will give it just a certain, give it a certain je ne sais quoi. It will give it a very handmade, like really cute, like already right now with this raw edge, it reminds me of that like Sherpa fabric where it's like that kind of tawny suede and then it's got the fluff on the other side. Um, kind of giving me those vibes. So like finished off, especially with like one of these wild colors, like 
something really busy like this might be kind of cute and then bring that in on the pockets it's hey it's another opportunity for color like surprise now we get more details um so i think that's what we're gonna do which i'm probably gonna find because this was a proper outerwear coat and it's got a true lining i'm probably gonna have to bind off most of this coat um because the pattern's gonna have me make the shell and make the lining and then sew and uh turn it inside but because i'm quilting the lining to the out uh it, i'm gonna have to you know circumvent that by binding it so when that like that's kind of the cool thing too is like really with with all these types of projects is if you change it you can just figure something else and like go for it um that was a little bit more anticlimactic than i was expecting but uh Oh, Ink Rabbit says, I could do the same triangle as, like, the yellow ones on my first paper piece and have dinosaur spikes. Yes. Uh, which is funny because, like, this is supposed to be a goose coat. So my first instinct was, like, why would I put dinosaur spikes on a goose coat? But then I'm always reminded of my, like, poultry to dinosaur acceptability scale. Um, and, you know, they pretty much are dinosaurs. So we'll see. We'll see. Because these can get kind of funky. Um, and if this is being washed a lot, like the coat, these might start to get kind of rumply and they might not look as cute, but yes, that would definitely be an option. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Maybe, maybe her next coat will be a dinosaur coat. We shall see. But now that I have this out, I just want to like touch it cause it's so pretty. I, I'm just, this is one of those where like, not in a like bragging way, but just in a little way where it's like, I made this and I sometimes can't believe it cause like. Believe it or not, finishing things is hard for me. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. No, just going back to Ink, Ink Rabbit says in chat, I won't ask Little Sprout just in case it's too much. I think visually it's going to be too much and I would like to get this finished for this winter. <laughs> so maybe we'll, we'll put it, we'll put a pin in that and save it. We'll save it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to save it uh, for a different project. But I'm going back to this, like, this was like, this was definitely a pandemic project. Uh, my mom taught me how to English paper piece, which if you've seen my YouTube, I've done a couple projects that are English paper piece. Um, so all of these hexagons were done, uh, by hand in the English paper piecing method. And I just, I don't know. I, I haven't finished a quilt in a long time. Like I've started a lot, um, started plenty, but I haven't finished one in a while. So the fact that this one's finished, uh, still just fills me with that, like that good, like, wow. And that magic, I really, it really is this like magic of like, I can actually make things. This is cool. Like, don't tell anybody or maybe I'll like, I don't know, it's that imposter syndrome. It's also just that like, I keep myself a little busy and most of the time, a little busy, I keep myself very busy, but most of the time my work like goes to other people. And so to like have a tangible reminder in front of me of something that I made that I like actually kept, I was like, oh yeah, hey, look at that. I just really like this one too. This was just something I like. Uh, oh, Ink Rabbit says, wasn't it going to be a bus curtain? Yes, and that's why it's dusty and has cat fur on it. It's because it's hanging up in a window. Um, yeah, so again, if you're new here, uh, I work inside a school bus. And um, as such, it's amazing and whimsical. Uh, but it um, it's like a tin can. And so in the summer, it's hot. In the winter, it's cold. So we have... <laughs> made it better by putting in insulation. I've got like wood floors in here. It's really charming. Uh, my bus's name is Arthur. So everybody say hi to Art. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do was in addition to like just putting up curtains for like curtain's sake, um, I wanted to try and make a bunch of quilts that were like thick. Um, and so that's why this one has like the double layer of the wool is because it's insulation from light and sound and heat. So these hang in the window and uh, help keep that, keep, keep the hot or the cold where it should be. <laughs> yeah, Ink Rabbit says in chat, I totally get that coming by an old coming by an old piece of art or uh, chain mail and being like, oh yeah, I can make, yeah, I can make things. And it's funny because like, I don't know, not to say though, like to non-creatives, do they get that? Because I'm sure everyone has some field where they're like, wow. But to me, it really is this magic. And like I said, it's not an arrogance of like, wow, I made, like, look at this thing I made it. It's more just like, look at this thing. Like, if I ever lose the magic and wonder of being impressed with, like, myself, then what's the point? It's more just like, wow, I I can make good things. I want to make good things. Like, wow, I'm, I'm, this is amazing. And now, and now I'm, like, hyped up again. Now I want to, like, let's make some more stuff. Like, let's make beautiful things and surround the ones we love and ourselves and 
everything with with beautiful things let's make beautiful things and we're getting there we're making beautiful things should we gotta get out the sewing machine um yeah we gotta because i think that's kind of where we are wow that went really fast i say like i haven't been streaming for i don't even know what is time oh it's only been like an hour and a half that's not too bad an hour if you take out me being late so what we're gonna do is um everyone go take a stretch break just drink some water i gotta lug the sewing machine down um so i'm gonna make some noise so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna i'm gonna brb and i'm gonna run an ad uh if you are subscribed you will not see that so thank you so much to my subscribers otherwise uh please stick around for the ad because it helps uh, me run the channel and uh, if you are not subscribed but have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free using your uh, Twitch Prime Gaming. So check that out. Um, right now I am going to BRB. And like I said, I'm just going to run a real quick ad that helps support the channel. So.